Hi everyone, I am Pastor Peggy from Slave Lake, Alberta. And I'm Pastor Diane from North Fork, New York. Welcome to Warm Hearted Wednesday. <laughs> it is Warm Hearted Wednesday. I've got my fire going here. Ooh, it's that still looks nice cold. It, it, it's Warm Hearted Wednesday. And we are looking forward to sharing a couple of stories with you of people in our community ha who have just been doing something nice for other people. Maybe this is a really good time to remind people why we air at 12.30 Central Time. That's a good idea. We haven't done that this week yet. We haven't. Um, well, Mark 12.30 chapter 12 verse 30 uh, Jesus is asked what is the greatest commandment and he said the greatest commandment is love the Lord your God with all your heart with all your soul with all your mind and with all your strength basically love God with everything you have and so we decided we're going to do this live stream premiere whatever um, at 12 30 central time because it's so important at this time to keep God central in our lives not to, to push him aside because of everything that's going on, but to keep him central, and to keep us focused on him. So that is why we are doing this this at 12.30 Central Time, which makes it 1.30 here in Norfolk. And 11.30 a.m. here in Slave Lake, Alberta. Yes, yes. So um, the second commandment, Jesus said there's, there's two commandments that are important. The first one is, is love God, but the second one is love your neighbor as yourself. And that's what Warm Hearted, Thur Warm -hearted Thursday, Warm Hearted Wednesday is all about. It's, it's about us showing our love for our fellow man, for our neighbors. Mm -hmm. And uh, I, I think you'll find these stories very um, interesting and heart touching. Absolutely. Well, thank you for uh, taking time to talk with us today, Ruthie. Appreciate it. Um, just wanted to ask about uh, the stuff that you're doing by making masks. Um, first of all, I wondered how you got started, when you got started. Um, as soon as I started seeing something on Facebook, I think the first one was Mask for Nurses, which is not around here, but you got a lot of ideas and got your mind whirling. and. I, of course, had a lot of fabric, so I thought I'd give my hand. Um, and then there was one closer to here, I think I was tagged in it, uh, sewing for safety. So being closer, it was easier to be deliverable and people around here. So, um, but yeah, people tag me and this and that, and I'm not, you know, people are making 100, 200, many, many, I can't do that. <laughs> I get, I, I've been watching, you know, some of your posts on Facebook, and um, it seems like every few days it's like I found a new, new, uh, new design. So, can you tell us a little bit about the evolution, like how you start, like the pattern that you started with, and how it's evolved? Um, reading a lot of comments on the different sites, what they're looking for. Um, before I realized that. Uh, the mask for, or sewing for safety, she posted on March 25th, um, I think again on the 29th. I'm not sure if that's changed, but they are saying that they are accepting at the Camp Costume Hospital, but I know for a fact at least two days that I don't know where they're at. I'm not saying they're not being delivered and held on to, um, but I don't know if they're being used yet or if they're not being required to have to use them but they they're saying if anything that they could use them over the other masks um you're just going by reading comments seeing anybody's updates which are a lot and and the rules keep changing so i've gone from the elastic around the ears which my mother prefers, it's easier um and carter like says to ties for the sewing for safety because that's what they're requiring the ties and the filter pockets okay they, it's like a my, mine are almost like a triple layer because i haven't folded so much but they can you can put they can put in a filter if they choose to not everybody has the correct things to put inside of them right. so they can be used for the actual possibly safety masks if okay. they don't have them but then, but they're saying that some of the other cloth masks they can put over top of, so there's a little extra protection. Yeah. If, 
running short or low. <laughs> and then you have people that are just wanting to get out and need to get out to the stores to have anything on. So those you're just making a double layer ties in elastic if you choose or whatever's easier. Where, where do you take yours? Do you have a person that you take them to or do you just give them out to family and friends? I know you gave me one and I really appreciate it. <laughs> yep, I made um, just three, three to five for my for Jessica and her family because uh -huh. um, uh, Tyler also works in essential worker where he could use them. Other than that, I have these and then the ones that I messed up on. So I'm, I have ones bagged up because they want them bagged up um, by five or less. Depends on how you made them. I have different kinds for her for the sewing for safety. So I need to deliver those. Okay. Dry, bag up, iron, all that. So when I get those delivered and when I get working on these, whoever needs wants. So right. people are just making them to give to people to use to have them to go outside of home. Yeah. So do you have any advice for uh, people that want to start doing this if they haven't started already? Go to find the easiest pattern. And I can't tell you right now because I'm getting input from Patricia Mattoon also. She's mm -hmm. them up, her and her husband. So I've asked her and one of my customers is making them. Um, so I'm going with them and Pinterest. I'm now finding one that looks so much easier. So when I get this pile done, it's a one cut of fabric. It's not three. You're oh. doing either, you know, two or three pieces of fabric, cutting them where you can just use one and just fold it over and inside out and all that. So don't don't cut a lot before you make. Make one right. or two, and then see how it's going for you. I'm willing to donate whatever I have. I don't. I won't take orders, but I would, you know. Well, we really appreciate so much um, all the hard work you've done, um, <laughs> <laughs> keeping people safe. Um, yeah, yeah. I went to the post office today, and I grabbed my mask and put it on, and and it does give a little bit of safe, uh, a sense of security. Yeah. We've just talked to to Ruthie about making masks. And wow. Yeah, she started making masks almost as soon as this started. So, good job. Well, they're certainly coming in handy right now. Oh, for sure. Yeah. Yeah. Everybody they, has to wear them now, so. They they say that when you take them off, though, it, to uh, take take them off, never to touch the outside, the front, and to take them off and immediately throw them into the washing machine, so that any germs that may be on the outside. Um, are washed clean, so don't reuse them without washing them first. Oh, really? Yeah. I had not heard that. Yeah. So it's that, that's what all the experts are saying. Um, yeah, to, to take them off and make sure that you don't reuse them to put them with your dirty laundry so they can be laundered and then they're fresh and clean for the next time you go out. And if you're only going out once once every week or two, one one mask should do it. Yeah, because you can just wash them up after. Yeah. yeah. Cool. So we're going to go into uh, an interview here in Slave Lake of somebody helping out here in Slave Lake now. Oh, I'm looking forward to it. All right. Well, good morning, Rebecca. How are you? Great, Pastor Peggy. How are you? I'm good, thank you. You surviving and everything like that? I am. It's great to see you. It's good to see you too. I miss you guys. I miss you too. We'll have to have a coffee after this. Definitely. <laughs> so you had an eventful weekend. I sure did. Yes. <laughs> Tell me what you did. Well, um, I'd say on Wednesday I was reading the community discussion and on the Slave Lake discussion board and somebody had asked about, um, is there an Easter bunny going around town? I've seen it in other communities. And I thought, with social distancing and everything, we can still go out on our front lawns, we can still go out on our balconies. And I thought, what a great thing for the kids if we could pull this together. They can't see their friends, they can't see their cousins, they can't see their families. So just to bring a little bit of excitement yeah. to their weekend. Um, I put a post on my personal Facebook page asking for some help. I knew we had an Easter Bunny costume somewhere in town. <laughs> and before I even hit go, the fire chief had reached out to me and let me know if you want someone to drive the Easter Bunny around, we'll be happy to do it for you. 
I hit post on my post. Within an hour, I had 20 people sending donations. We, it was unbelievable. Yeah. I had enough by the end, I'd say for about 4,500 children. Um, I was still a little bit panicked that there wasn't enough, so I had a few more donations trickle in, and we probably had enough for about 6,000 children. That is absolutely unbelievable. Well, I mean, that, that just shows the heart of Slave Lake, doesn't it? Absolutely, absolutely. I was blown away. I was so happy to see the amount of people that came out and that enjoyed two minutes of happiness over their weekend. And that must have been amazing for you. Uh, selfishly, it was, I got to see so many people that I, I couldn't have connected with otherwise. Amazing. So just their faces and wish them all in person a happy Easter from a far enough distance away. Um, the following day, instead of seeing coronavirus, coronavirus, my Facebook was flooded with videos and happy kids seeing the Easter Bunny. It was it was fantastic. Wow, maybe um, I can go and grab a couple of those videos and post them in the comments down below so that people Absolutely. can see them, right? Yeah. yeah. So now I, I know because I was watching the live stream of it uh, almost all afternoon <laughs> on Sunday. Um, you had scheduled from one to two to do this. How long did it take? Uh, we originally scheduled one till three. Okay. Scheduled two hours for it, um, which is usually what Santa ends up doing on Christmas Eve. So we thought that's a perfect amount of time. However, because of the amount of people that were out, it actually took us four and a half hours <laughs> to, get through, to get through the town. And I'm happy to say we hit every single street. <laughs> that is absolutely amazing. Well, you guys did a fantastic job. And what better way to bring a little bit of hope into Slave Lake than absolutely. to... Yeah. Our well, community thank, is amazing. Yeah. It really is. It, to come together, for something like that to come together in 24 hours, we live in a pretty great place. We sure do, yeah. Is there anything else that you'd like to add I just want to say thank you to everybody that stepped up and helped me out. Um, you guys had an amazing donation. I had lots of donations from some great friends and I really appreciate it. Well, we were happy to, I mean, you know, if you had enough for 6,000 kids, I mean, you know, but that that's the thing, everybody working together. And that's, even though we're all separate, we are all together in this and I think this parade and what it shows is the togetherness in this community and our togetherness in this situation. We live in a great place. We sure do. And we have to stay connected. It's really important no matter how you do it. Um, as long as you're keeping your distance, going on uh, Zoom meetings, Skype, Facebook, uh, we need to stay connected to our people. Yeah, absolutely. Well, Rebecca, thank you so much for what you've been doing, what you are doing. And if I, I got, I actually got tears <laughs> coming down my face. Our, our motto is to reach out and bring hope. And that's exactly what you did. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, we thank you, Rebecca. We thank all the people that have come together to make this possible. And uh, we look forward to hearing other warm heart moments. Well, that was a great story. I love to hear what uh, what people are doing to show um, care and concern and love for their neighbors. Yeah. This has been a great day um, listening to these two stories and can't wait to, to hear stories from next week. Now, I'm sure that some of you have, have some stories that you'd like to share with us as well. That's what the comments are for. So please, please tell us your stories. Um, either of things that you've been doing or things that uh, you've seen other people do. Um, we'd love to see them and it encourages all of us. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. So, you know, yeah, if you've seen someone, even if you want to take a little video of them or something like that, post it in the comments below because we would love to see. Yes, we would. Mm -hmm. Well, until tomorrow for Tadpole Thursday, I'm Diane from Norfolk Wesleyan Church. And I'm Pastor Peggy from Slave Lake Wesleyan. 
Bye. Be safe. Be healthy. And, and be, be the church. The church. <laughs> Bye, everyone. Bye.